Okay, how's everybody doing today? You're watching Slot Car Mayhem. I'm John, and today we're going to talk about getting the single board computer ready to go and seeing if we can get this to work with the Smart Race. And this is the uh, Kadas Vim 3, that's Victor India Mike 3. And in this case here, this is the Vim 3 Pro. There's three versions of this board currently available the Vim 3L which I wouldn't recommend for this application. And then there is the Vim 3 Basic and the Vim 3 Pro. And the, the Basic and the Pro are basically the same board with the exception of memory. Um, the Basic comes with two gigs of low power DDR4 RAM and 16 gigs flashed on the onboard eMMC. And the Pro version that I have here has four gigs of DDR4 RAM and 32 gigs flashed on the onboard EMMC. This board here, I uh, believe it was original, originally supposed to release with the uh, S922X processor, but last minute they changed to the MLogic A311D, which is a hex core processor, and you have four A73 cores for the large cores clocked at 2.2 gig and two of the smaller A53 cores clocked at 1.8 gig. It also has a 5.0 TOPS neural processing unit on board, which we're not even gonna to get to. It has HDMI connection. It has two USB ports that can be configured for uh, 2.0 or 3.0. It has uh, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth 5.0, uh, 40 pin GPIO, and uh, it's a good all around unit. Power is supplied through a USB-C. So I think I paid about 130 bucks for this board here. And there's some other things you're gonna need. We'll go through some of that here real quick. First off, I've got uh, my standard wireless keyboard mouse, which I'll use uh, to hook up into the system. But the board comes just like this, comes in a nice little box with the two IPEX antennas in the board. That's it, that's what you get with the board. You're gonna want the power supply. And since this is a relatively powerful processor, uh, it also means it's power hungry, right? So I've got a, uh, also from Kadas, it's a 24 watt uh, USB-C type of uh, power supply and it's about three amps at five volts. So this is a pretty good unit here and I wanna make sure we've got plenty of power. I also have a USB-C to USB-C mail to mail and that'll deliver the power. And so you've got your power and that's something you want. Uh, let's talk about the case. You're going to want a case of some sorts to eliminate trying to handle the board too terribly much. And uh, so I bought this case that's made by Kadas for this board. And I got to admit, it's really a nice little case. Uh, and the case comes with everything you see here. It's the main case itself, the top, four long screws, four short screws, and this little driver. It's a triangle driver that is used on the long screws because these are basically security screws. It's a... Uh very pretty little box so it's a shame I won't be using this on the end game uh, the end game is this board will be um, uh, chassis mounted and uh, I won't even be using the case by the time I'm have all this up and running and implemented and everything's integrated and working so let's go ahead and let's get this board started uh, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get my case ready to go and I'm going to carefully remove the board nice foam packaging in there and I'm going to set the board in the case just like so it just drops right in just like that you can get to all your ports and you can get your split your uh, buttons right here on the side and for this we're going to need just a regular Phillips screwdriver and I'm going to use the short screws now that being said I would recommend using obtaining and using the heat sink that comes that, or that you can buy for this and I did purchase one it's on its way it should be here in about a week but at this point before you screw it down you would put the thermal pad over the processor itself right here and then you would go ahead and take the heat sink and set it down in place and the heat sink comes with longer screws that you can add to basically sandwich the heat sink, the board, to the case. So, but for right now, I'm just going to use the short screws 
and get this stuff in. And once again, you don't want to crank everything down. Just snug is good enough here. All right, and the last one. Okay, now the next thing we want to do is we have two antennas here. And these are IPEX connections on the antennas. It's a little confusing because as you can see, the antennas are actually different. So which one goes to where? Well, let's take a look and see what we got. See if I can get in this thing in close enough. Okay, here and here, these little dots, are your IPEX connectors. There's your 40 pin GPIO, just so you can orient yourself. I don't think you can see it on here, but one has a B printed by it, and the other has an M printed by it. And if we look at the I don't think I'm even going to get this to focus in. Let's see it happening. Okay. But if we look at uh, what we have here, there's writing up here. Right there, there's a B. And on the other end, antenna, we have an M. So we know which one hooks where. It's pretty simple. So we just follow those and we do our connections. And uh, I'm going to put you on pause right now, and I'm going to go ahead and make these IPEX connections. And then we'll get this thing put together, finalized, and get it ready to fire up. Okay, we're back. I've got my uh, IPEX antenna connectors hooked in. One there, one there. And these just sit there just like that. I'm going to go ahead and we're going to drop the top on. This uh, black portion here, which is removable, that goes over the 40 pin GPIOs and that's so you can access the GPIO pins without having to take the case apart. And that just simply sits up on there. And then the core, the uh, screws come in this way. And once again, we're using these triangle heads and the driver is supplied with the case. That is the uh, whole entire assembly with the exception of the heat sink of the FIM-3 in the case, and we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna get this thing powered up. Before we go ahead and power it up though, I wanna make sure I've got my connections in place before we add power. So I'm gonna take my USB dongle for my wireless keyboard and mouse, drop that in. I'm gonna make the connection for the HDMI, just like that. And now all I gotta do is add the USB power. Okay, since the USB-C to USB-C mail that I have have pretty large connections on them, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and use a smaller two watt or two amp power supply temporarily. And I'll have to get myself another cord here in order to uh, get some with smaller ends on them to make it work. So we've got our power hooked up to a smaller unit. I've got the get the monitor turned on here. Okay, the monitor's on. I've got my uh, wireless connected. I've got the HDMI connected. And I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna connect power now. And let's see what happens. Okay, it's plugged in. The, uh, there's a little light here in the front. That's coming on and we can see now, wow, this is quick. I'm already coming up on the screen with the Kadas logo. It's, uh, that's the introduction to loading into Android. So that's coming in nice and quick. And yeah, there's our Android logo. And wow, we're already in Android already. Um, wow, that's pretty impressive. I see we got the Play Store installed already. Um, Chrome is on here, set up, ready to go. Wow, that was amazingly fast. Um, and yep, the sound just kicked in, so now I do have sound. So that's pretty impressive. What was that, 28 seconds? Wow, that's fast. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna log into the Play Store, and at this point you would normally do it like you would any other uh, type of uh, Android device. So there's my Play Store right there. 
and I'm going to go ahead and log into it and I'll get everything set up and we'll see you in a minute. Okay, we're back. Um, I've got the Smart Race and the uh, Google Drive installed and I've already loaded in the Smart Race and I've uh, restored my backup and it seems to run just fine. I've got it starting up right now and wow. Okay, but now it's asking for location settings. So something I've figured out here, if we go to location settings and we click on it, it's just going to go right back to off. So I'll have to see how we're going to make this work with connections and uh, we'll take it over the track and we'll see what we end up with. Okay, so I've got the VIM3 connected now through long HDMI to the big screen for the track. I've got it sitting here right there by the track and I've got my Bluetooth keyboard and mouse and I got those over here. I'm going to try to keep those out of the way a little bit and I'm going to make sure I've got a good solid connection between my Bluetooth and see if we can get this smart race to connect. So let me go ahead and fire up the control unit and I'm going to go ahead and start toggling the smart race. Now it's going to tell me that I need to open settings and get to location services. So this is what we're going to try. See if we can get this thing to connect. Okay, well after uh, trying to cycle through and launching and getting the uh, location services on off, on off, on off, on off, it finally went ahead and clicked in and connected. So that tells me that I'm going to need to install a different version of Android and I should be able to do that with no problem. But currently right now, uh, everything appears to be up and running. I've already got everything set. So I'm gonna go ahead and toss in a new race real quick. I've already got one set up and get it ready to go. So now I'm just having to use the mouse instead of the touch screen. And I'll set this one up for 20 laps, I guess. Yeah, and the Bluetooth keyboard seems to work great. So, good, and start, it's just a little, feels a little unnatural using a mouse to control this, but I'm sure I'll get used to that. Okay, and I'm not going to have any lights or rain or anything like that because I don't have any of that built into this yet. But we'll go ahead and start the race and we'll see what we have. Three, two, one, go! Audio seems to work good. Okay. I'll have to I'll have to check my settings, but I'm not getting the little chimes when the car crosses the finish line. And I've had that problem before with it being intermittent even on uh, any Android. So that's I'm not too concerned about that. Okay, the rain just kicked in and everything slowed down. So I'm going to go ahead and pull into the pit. And as you can see, the screen is extremely quick and responsive. So, um, yeah, I think this works just fine uh, once you get it connected. It seems to be working just fine. Okay, I'm gonna pull out and there we go. It's back to nice and slow. Wow, I'm really impressed with the way the screen looks. Uh, it's very high resolution and the direct HDMI connection is giving me a really good look. Okay, and I want to make sure we get the rest of our noises. All our other sounds seem to be coming into play. And six more laps and we're done. Only five laps left. Four. Three. Two. One. And we're done. Okay, and I've got my uh, applause and everything else. So the only sounds that seem to be missing is the chimes when the car crosses the start-finish line. Uh, I'll take a look at that and see, but that's probably an Android issue or a permission setting. But uh, I've got to address the permission settings for the uh, location to get this to connect properly. And that's uh, something involved with Android 6 and up. But if I can't 
force it on. At this point, I'm probably going to have to use another version of Android. Okay, I just went ahead and turned everything off and back on again. And I was still able to reconnect simply by cycling the location settings. So it's obvious I'm going to need a different version of Android. And they have several builds available at the website for Kados. So flashing a new Android image onto this board is not difficult. So I'm going to go ahead and tackle that and we'll continue and see where we go. But before I do that, I'm just going to continue running with what we have here for now and make sure it's stable and everything works. Currently right now you can see we are still connected. So and that's after another uh, turn off and uh, restart the smart race. So uh, connection issues are a little odd, but they do function and the system does seem to work very well and we're going to go ahead and see if we can tweak it a little bit more and get what we're looking for out of it. I'm not going to call this a success at this point. I'm going to say we're well on our way. Anytime you're dealing with a single board computer you're going to have these kind of hiccups and they're usually not insurmountable and they're pretty easy to work around and uh, the solution is very simple. I can come down here push a button to fire off these little computers and and within 30 seconds they're going to be up and running turn the track on the track will be up and running and we're ready to go so that's my end game and uh, that takes care of that but I'll keep you updated on the uh, uh, first build of the single board computer and uh, until then just go ahead and hit that notification button if you haven't done so there's a lot coming up here we've got uh, I'm starting to get some pieces now trickle in for the track so that should be taking place next weekend I'll also be starting the pit buildings very soon and there's a lot of little things we're going to be dealing with so uh, there's gonna be a lot of activity here a lot of things happening so if you guys got any questions or comments or anything else you wish to see just hit me up and let me know other than that uh, I want everybody to have a good day and I really appreciate everybody watching and all the uh, subscriptions and we'll just keep moving forward and we'll do what we can so once again, you know, you guys are the reason why we're doing this, so I really appreciate everything. All right, I want everybody to have a great day, and we'll talk to you later. Thanks for watching.